Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And it's Friday and we've got a question from Arnab Sarkar who says, what is the difference between a RAW and a DNG file? First of all, DNGs are RAW files. It's just another RAW file type. Now, if you don't know what a RAW file is, a RAW file is all of the data that was captured by the image sensor dumped into a file for you to process at your computer. And different camera manufacturers have different RAW file formats. They have proprietary formats. So for Canon, I think it's CR2. For Nikon, it's the NEF file. For uh, Olympus, it's the ORF file. So every manufacturer has a proprietary RAW file format. And what Adobe tried to do is create the DNG, which stands for digital negative, as a universal raw file format that everybody could use. I don't think that this is an officially certified ISO standard universal open file format, but it is a format that Adobe makes available for anybody to use for free. And it's advantageous for Adobe to do this because if everybody uses this one file format, then it makes them easier to support all the cameras and all the files in their software. Now, the manufacturers don't really support this. And what I mean by that is Canon still has their proprietary RAW file type, and Nikon still has theirs, and Fuji has theirs, and Olympus has theirs, and on and on and on. Some camera manufacturers do use it. I believe Pentax cameras use DNG for the RAW file format instead of a proprietary Pentax file format. But honestly, Pentax are the only cameras that I personally have run into that just use DNG and don't have a proprietary proprietary raw file format. So they're all raw files. Now here are the differences between them. First of all, uh, as I said, the DNG is this quote unquote open file format that anybody can use. Whereas CR2 files, those are Canon specific raw files that Canon proprietarily designed in their cameras and Nikon has their own, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a DNG file is actually a container file. So it's sort of like a zip file. That's not really true, but it sort of gives you idea because what happens when you convert a raw file from say your Canon camera into a DNG file is that the software that's converting it takes the raw file from your camera and it actually compresses it using a lossless compression uh, a logarithm, which means that while it compresses it, you don't lose any data. And then it tucks it inside of the DNG file. And then that DNG file becomes the raw file. Now, because this is a container file, the other thing that happens is any changes made to the raw file are actually written to the DNG file. This is both a good and a bad thing depending upon how you look at it. See, typically when you make a change to your raw file using Lightroom or using any other raw processing software, what happens is those changes that you make are written to a new file, what's called a sidecar file. And that file is put on your hard drive right next to your actual raw file. And then when Lightroom or your other software looks at the raw file, it looks for a sidecar file. And if it finds the sidecar file, it reads that file and says, these are the changes that have been made to this raw file. And it displays those changes. The sidecar file is a disadvantage because it is another file but really you never have to worry about it because it's in your file structure and Lightroom knows it's there and it's automatically backed up when you back up your folder structure. So it's not like it's a big deal and these are small text files so it's not like they take up a lot of space. The advantage of the DNG is that it's all contained within one file but the disadvantage is when you write data to the actual file there's the possibility of that file becoming corrupted. So when you make changes in Lightroom, the changes are written to the DNG file that could potentially become corrupted and you could actually lose the ability to make changes or work with that raw file. Whereas with the sidecar file and your manufacturer raw file, if your, if your sidecar file gets corrupted, you still have your original untouched raw file. Yes, you've got to re-edit it again, but you've got your raw file. 
Whereas if your DNG raw file is corrupted and unreadable, the raw file is unreadable, which means you can't do anything with it. Now, uh, to me, it's a horse apiece. I personally use the manufacturer raw file. And the reason I do is because it's one more step to convert over to a DNG file. I've never had any problems with manufacturer raw files. And the manufacturers support their raw files over time. They have to because if they abandon these files, people aren't gonna buy and use their cameras. But as I said, I personally don't use them because I don't really see a need to. If this became an actual standard and every camera manufacturer was using DNG files, then of course I'd use it. But I am comfortable using the manufacturer raw file. So that's the difference between raw and DNG files. And I hope you guys enjoyed this answer to Arnab's question. And if you have questions for me, leave them down in the comments. And my question of the day for you is what are you doing this weekend? It's a Friday, summer is officially over. What are your weekend plans? Now, do me a favor, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel? If you really like this video, maybe share it with your friends. But the most important thing you need to do is get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys next week if it actually became like this universal open standard and every camera manufacturer was using dng files i just hit my light